Like a sea heart that washes ashore after years of drifting at sea, maybe the luck of the surf has guided you here too? This is the story of a sacred seed from the jungle and its incredible 5,000 mile long journey across the sea. Legends of the Sea Heart, Coeur de la Mer. Of all man's attachments, it is his relationship with nature that offers the greatest experience for soulful learning. What represents the idea and substance of life more fundamentally than a seed? A symbol of beginnings, the seed is a messenger for the spirit of life and the will to grow, flourish, and evolve. Growing along the banks of the Amazon River in the cloud forests of Brazil is a vine so mysterious and powerful that its seeds have become legendary the world over. It is here, among a wealth of biodiversity of flora and fauna, that the sea heart is born. The sea heart vine is called Entaragigas, which means giant seed, and the pods that house the seeds are also the longest beans on our planet. Measuring six feet or longer, the waxy hourglass-shaped legumes hide a dozen or more treasured pearls inside a natural gift wrapping of compartmentalized envelope pod sections. The Entata vine pours from the earth like a giant boa constrictor, and it slithers across the forest floor in search of a neighboring host tree. Quickly, the invasive liana attaches itself to the tree trunk and twists and wraps its woody tentacles around branches as it begins its rapid growth skyward. Like the fabled Jack and the Beanstalk, the Entatagigas grows at an astonishing rate of two to six inches a day, and it can reach 100 feet into the treetops in less than a year or two. At its base, the vine can resemble a large tree, and they can grow as wide as a man's waist. As the vine spreads, it creates an arboreal highway for insects and animals to traverse the jungle safely from above. The natives call the network of vines monkey ladders, and the seeds have such colorful names as cocoons, go-go, lucky beans, spirit seeds, dream beans, African dream herbs. But all over the world, those lucky enough to find one just lovingly call them sea hearts. The shiny mahogany heart-shaped peas or seeds are released from the drying pods at maturity. During the rainy season, torrential waters flood the forest floor and wash the natural trash, which includes sea hearts, into streams that turn into rivers that eventually empty into the sea. Sea hearts floating along the great winding rivers of the Orinoco and the Amazon can take months before reaching the mouth where fresh water and salty water merge. Equipped with a hard armor shell and blessed with an internal air cavity that acts as a life preserver, making for the perfect seaworthy vessel, sea beans can float for years in salt water where most other seeds, including coconuts, would sink after just six months. Once adrift, the seeds are propelled along the warm currents of the Gulf Stream. Passing the coast of Texas and Florida, some drift seeds wash up after storms on the beaches in the Americas. While other sea beans, call them the lucky ones, they can survive years in the ocean braving treacherous storms and an icy cold Atlantic voyage. Eventually, after years and thousands of miles, call it fate or destiny or just tenacity and perseverance, a lucky sea heart washes ashore on a distant land. From England to Ireland, from Scandinavia to Greenland, beachcombers, explorers, mariners, medicine men, shaman, travelers and lovers have all contributed to the colorful folklore and superstitions that have become known as the Sea Heart legend. In the spirit of an old Venezuelan tradition, it is lucky to carry a sea heart, for one in hand, the right pathway is always chosen. In tales from Christopher Columbus, sea hearts found on the beaches of Porto Santo Azores inspired the explorer to search for lands to the west, and islanders still call the sea hearts Fava de Colom, or Columbus's beans. Jamaican elders tell of the maroon warriors who were trapped in the cockpit mountains of the island's interior 
and outlasted the invading British redcoats by drinking the water that flowed from the cut vine of the cocoon. In fact, the marriage between sea hearts and water lives on in the rural Caribbean homes, with sea hearts being placed in rain drums to keep the water f cool, fresh, and safe. The Vikings called sea hearts stones, and they also considered finding one as a gift or an omen from the gods of the sea, and they also thought they came from aquatic plants growing at the bottom of the ocean. Symbolizing new life, the Norsemen brewed a strong ale using sea hearts for expectant mothers to ensure a safe and easy delivery. Later on, it was given to babies as a natural teething ring. In Africa, the seeds are digested or smoked to enhance lucid dreaming and communication with the spirit world. Worn as an amulet or carried as a talisman, the sea heart has also been used medicinally in teas and tonics as a blood purgative, as a salve, and a poultice to relieve inflammation. In Norway, seeds were polished and adorned with gold and jewels and made fashionable as lockets and boxes for matches and snuff. Today, sea hearts are given as tokens of appreciation and undying affection. Exchanged between friends and lovers, the heart unites and bonds souls over time, distance, and space. Like a bottle floating in the ocean, sea hearts carry a message of wisdom from generations of tribal storytellers. It is a true survivor, a sacred life force, and a call for consciousness from our vanishing seas and forests. As one of the rarest and most beautiful seeds on earth, the excitement of finding a sea heart is equaled only by the soulfulness of sharing one with a friend. Carry it with you always and delight in telling the magical legend and embellish it with stories from your own sea heart journey. Sea hearts are about sharing. When the time is right, pass yours on. <laughs>